Welcome to the Minute Anthony Common Nature Center. I am Miss Kim. Are you ready for your virtual field trip? Come, let's explore fall. Hi, fourth graders. Today, we're going to be learning about loon migrations. By doing that, we're gonna head on Friendship Loop and play a little migration game. Before we get started, I wanna show you what a loon looks like. So this is obviously not a real loon. This is a stuffed animal, but loons are way bigger. This is a life-size replica of a common loon. This is the size of maybe possibly a baby loon. Loons have red eyes, a black beak, and they have white spots on their back with a white belly. Loons are a great bird for around here, but they're not seen here all year. They actually migrate in the fall. I'm gonna show you this. This is a map of where our loons migrate to. So we are all the way at the tip right here. And they migrate all the way down to the Gulf in Florida. That's a long ways. And we're going to learn how hard it is to get from point A to point B. So let's get started on the fun. To get started, every good game has a die. So I'll roll it. Let's see what magic number I get. Two. So, I'm gonna be a loon. Yes, you may laugh at me. And I'm gonna fly to the second station. One, two. So we're gonna read the station. It says, good news, food is plentiful. Many fish are available in this river. Smack your beak 10 times and move ahead five stations. So, smacking your beak is this. Pretend you have a very long beak like a loon and smack it 10 times. Okay, but before I move on, I have this wonderful did you know fact. So, did you know loons do not chew their food? They have elastic throats that allow the loon to swallow their food whole. When they swallow the fish, their throat expands to the size of the fish they eat, so they do not choke. I would love to be a loon because then I wouldn't have to worry about chewing my food and choking. That is so cool. So, we're going to move five stations. I'm flying. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this one says you get tangled in a fishing line and can't eat. You're weak from hunger. The wildlife rehabilitator cuts the line and feeds you. Hop on one leg in a circle, count to 40, then move ahead four stations. Wait a minute. All right, let's try this. You're gonna hop on one leg in a circle and count to 40. Feel free to laugh at me and feel free to join me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ah! twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
a little winded. Good thing I'm not a loon. You can't find last year's nesting spot because a new duck has built there. Walk around in three wide circles searching and to rest for food. You are still hungry and only have the strength to move ahead one station. All right. So how many times am I supposed to? Three circles. One, two, and three. All right, we have a did you know fact. So, did you know loons travel to the same nesting spot each year? Nests are built out of plants and logs along the shoreline. Loons often have the same partner from year to year. When a partner dies, the other will find a new partner. And I'm gonna show you the nest. So, this is a real loon nest. This is a loon covering her eggs. She spreads her wings out and lays, lies very low and very still. That's so she can hide the nest. She's camouflaging herself and she's camouflaging her eggs. This is a picture of a loon egg. Isn't that neat? Brown and speckled. Notice how the nest is right on the shoreline. That's because loons can't walk on land. They're strictly a water bird. Their legs are very behind them. So if I was a loon, and this is a loon body, my legs are sitting right here instead of in the center like a lot of birds, like ducks and geese. So when they make their nest on land, they have to have it right along the shoreline so they can actually rub their bellies and scoop down into the water. Okay. So, I only have enough strength to move ahead one station. So, here we go. Phew! While flying near a large city, you almost collide with a jet. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't want that. Go ahead, uh, go back three stations while you cover. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just hear that? I have to go back three stations. This isn't good for my traveling. One. Two. Three. Uh-oh. I'm gonna die. <laughs> it's raining. <coughs> it's pouring. And you don't want to fly in this rainstorm. Count to 50 while you wait for the storm to stop. Roll the die and then move ahead that number of stations. All right. We're going to count really, really super fast because I don't want to go slow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. <gasps> 
One. Really? One? All right. One. Okay. This one says strong winds from a wrong direction keep you from migrating. Roll the die around to blow back that many stations. So. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, Watch out for that bald eagle. It wants to eat you. Freeze, count to 40, and sneak ahead two stations. Okay, I'm gonna count in my head really quick. Nice and quiet. Freeze. Scientists catch you for research. They put you with a metal band on your leg and set you free. Tie a piece of flagging around your ankle and move ahead two stations. Well, here's my flagging. <coughs> flagging is actually <coughs> like a plastic band, but this is way easier. So I'm gonna use some tape. All right, two stations. One, two. All right. You find an inland reservoir. There are many fish here. Dive and catch 20 times and then roll the die for, to move ahead that number of stations. Okay, before I do that, let's read the did you know fact because I'm gonna be winded by the time we're done with this. Okay. It says, did you know loons can dive up to 200 feet underwater for food? Loons can stay underwater for five minutes. 200 feet, that's incredible. All right, I can tell you I'm not diving 200 feet to catch fish. I have a limit there. All right, so here we go. If you're doing this with me, we're going all the way down, all the way up. No cheatsies. And what we're gonna do is dive like a loon down, in and up. Twenty yet? I lost count. And that's twenty, right? Yep, twenty. Okay, now we gotta move the number. Five. All right. Let's hope that we get a better spot this time. One. Three, four, and five. 
Okay, you arrive at a large lake where there is plenty of clean water, food, and shelter. Rub your stomach 15 times and move ahead for stations. All right. <laughs> oh, yummy. Oh, yes. Now, can you do this? This has nothing to do with loons, but I always think this is fun as we're rubbing our stomach. Can you pat your head too? Oh, yes, I'm a good loon. Okay, here's a tricky one. Can you switch hands? Yes, let's try to switch hands. All right, let's see if I can do this. Kind of, it's a lot harder for me. All right, I'm a full happy loon right now. So let's do the did you know. Did you know all living things, including loons, need four factors to have a healthy habitat? Food, water, shelter, and space. That is a very important fact. Let me repeat those factors. Food, water, shelter, and space. These four factors are the reason why birds migrate. If they can't find those factors, they have to move to get those four factors. If they can't get it, they're not in a healthy habitat and they will die. So food, water, shelter, and space is the driving force of your migratory birds. All right, move ahead for stations. Here we go. I think we're getting close to the end. One. Two. Three. And four. All right, here's the tiny little guy. You just flew into a tall grass built let me try this again. You just flew into a, a tall glass building next to the river. Sit down, hold your head, and count to 35, then roll the die and move ahead that number of stations. <clears throat> All right, have you ever bonked your head before? It really hurts, you see stars, right? That's what we're doing. Oh, oh. it hurts. Oh, I've got a, such a headache. My neck hurts. I gotta keep moving, but I can't right now. Oh, I'm seeing the stars around my head. Oh, it hurts. This is a real problem for a lot of birds, just not loons. I have seen birds hit their heads against glass because they they don't realize they can't fly through. It's actually a really bad hazard for a lot of different birds. And sometimes they fly so hard, it doesn't just give them a headache. They can actually break their neck and they die. Lots of times they're just stunned and they're not holding their head like I am. They're just like sitting there going, oh my gosh, let the world stop spinning. And they're very, very still. And sometimes it takes a good long time for them to get back to themselves to be able to fly away. So even though this seemed a little silly, it's a real serious threat to birds. Okay. So, roll my little itty bitty die. It says five. Here's two, three, four, five. Uh-oh. I already know what's going to happen. Let's read it. It says, bad luck. You joined a flock of birds that has been exposed to disease. You get sick and you die. 
sorry, die dramatically. And then go back and see the chart. Okay. Ugh. Here I am dying dramatically. Ugh. Oh, here I go, I'm sick. Here I go. Unfortunately, we did not make the travel. That happens a lot actually to migratory birds. One place is really good for them, other places not so much. Now, before I played this game with you guys, I had some friends that did this game as well. And this is the chart they filled out as they went along. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, that survived. And then we had four that didn't survive. So what we did was, is each time somebody went in, went through the journey, they put an X on where, where they landed. And at the end, this is our chart. Now, this time, we had more birds that actually survived than not survived. But sometimes it can be the reverse. The reason why is migratory birds need a healthy habitat from point A to point Z. And every place in between in the letters of the alphabet. So, uh, all healthy habitats need food water, shelter, and space. If one of those four things are missing, those birds cannot survive. And they need those landing zones to recoup and get themselves ready for the next journey. So it doesn't matter where you live, all places are important to keep healthy. Some ways that you can help migratory birds is picking up your litter. That is one really good thing that you can do um, for migratory birds. Also, try to be mindful, keep habitats the same. Um, so, places where there's nesting grounds, keep those the same as possible. Uh, keep them clean, keep them quiet. So then, birds have places that they can repeat and go to. Because once it's gone, you don't know how that's gonna affect a bird. The other thing is it might be okay for one bird, but not another. I hope you guys have fun with this and I hope you enjoy looking for your migratory birds. Hey everybody, we just got done with a really neat game uh, learning about loon migration, but we're gonna do something a little more e exploring to do. So you'll have a worksheet that your teacher will print out for you. You can take a closer look. This is an observation sheet. Now all I did is take a hardcover book and a little clothespin and clipboard it uh, to your book. Go out for about 10 minutes somewhere, find a bird and watch it. It can be anywhere. Um, birds like what they call edge habitat. So a lawn is perfect um, next to a field or um, next to the woods. It really doesn't matter. It could be your schoolyard, backyard, anywhere. Find that bird that you think is really cool. Then you're gonna fill out this sheet. So first of all, you're gonna put a date down because if you start making lots of observations, you'll start learning what birds are in the area at different times of the year. Then it says, can you identify your bird? And if so, what is it? Don't panic if you don't know the name of your bird. That's okay. But if you do, you can put it down. Then you're gonna draw your bird in this uh, picture box. Now, you don't have to be a beautiful artist, but try hard to draw things that are different about that bird. So if your bird has a mask around its eyes, make sure you add that into your picture. If your bird has a forked tail, add that into your picture. If its feet are wet, that might be an important thing to put into your picture. So draw as much as you can find on your bird. Then you're gonna go up here. It says, what habitat did you find it in? And it lists a whole bunch of different habitats that you can circle or 
you can write where you found it. Then you're going to write uh, what kind of bird is it. So that's not the, the type of bird, but is it a water bird? Is it a raptor? Is it a songbird? Shorebird? Waiting bird? Whichever bird you think it is. And you should have an idea of what it is by drawing your picture. That will kind of tell you. If it has sharp talons, sharp feet, then that's going to tell you that it's a raptor. If it has webbed feet, then it's going to be a bird that lives in the water. So just think about it for a minute, and I bet you you can answer that question. Then it says behaviors. What's it doing? So did you see it flying? Did you see it sitting up in a tree? Um, was it on the ground picking up insects? So just write down what you see, what it's doing while you're watching it. Then it says, was the bird singing? If so, what's it sound like to you? What do you think it was saying? So just listen to the call and you can tell. If it's a screech like, yay, then probably he's trying to be frightening, like I'm a scary bird. If he's going tweet, 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 then he's obviously happy, maybe talking to the other birds. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just how you think the bird is sounding to you. Then it says, have you seen this bird before? Do you think it is a migratory bird and why? So again, it's just what you've been seeing. You've seen birds your whole life, but this is a time to say, well, this is what I know. So if you only see that bird this time of year, then that's what you write. So if you only see it one time of year, that means it's a migratory bird. If you see that bird all the time, even if you don't know what it is, it means that it stays here year round. So that's all it's saying. And then here, it says other comments. So if there's something you wanna write that's really neat about your bird that doesn't get answered here, that's where you write it. You don't have to fill this out, but it gives a great place to write other information. Then the fun really begins. Once you've watched your bird and you filled out that whole form, there is another page. And this says bird observation story. So everything that you wrote on this page, you're going to form a neat story right here. Have fun with it. And if you have an opportunity, I would love you to send it to the Nature Center and I would love to read them. I hope you have a good time doing this. Have fun.